Hello everyone. Today we're working on a Saab and uh, these vehicles are a little bit difficult to work on especially when it comes to electronics because parts are hard to find and when you do find them they're very expensive. It requires special equipment to program them, to diagnose them, yada yada. Anyway, not trying to steal a video or steal an idea that I found off of YouTube but I thought this was such a great idea I couldn't help but share my own version, my own fix of it. And I wanted to show you guys what I did to get this car running and back on the road again. To summarize, it's a 2004 Saab 9.3. This vehicle has a common problem with the, I believe it's a CIM or some module goes bad with the column lock, I believe it is, or the ignition, the column lock. Anyway, parts are really expensive and then it requires a bunch of special tools and equipment to... Uh, program once you replace that module you even have to have a laptop with Windows XP I believe or a computer with Windows XP one or two uh, General Motors Tech 2 with Saab capabilities anyway the list goes on and on the problem we had was every once in a while when attempting to start the vehicle you put the key in the ignition and the warning message I'll show you the screenshot here a warning message would show up on the little information display uh, saying there was a column lock error or some other error message up there. I'll, I'll show you the screenshot here of exactly what was displayed. And it turns out that this problem is caused by a bad module in the steering column here. It's about $600, $700 or so, and then all the programming that goes into it. It was going to be a real nightmare. The car's not even worth the amount of money that we would have to put into it to fix that problem. So I found a solution online where someone had bypassed that module with a little switch to disconnect and connect it. The owner of this car discovered that when she disconnected the battery for about 30 seconds or so and reconnected it, the vehicle would then start and run and be okay for a while. However, that became a little bit of a hassle having to disconnect the battery every time she had the issue. So rather than sink all the money into it, we've gone with this little temporary fix. Now, disclaimer, this is obviously not the entire 100% correct way to fix this problem. However, it has worked for us and it seems like there's other people who have had success with this fixing their problem as well. This is, a, this is a U.S. vehicle, so it's a left-hand drive. And the fuse block on the inside of the vehicle is right here behind this little cover. Now, you'll notice behind this little cover here that I soldered two little connectors, two little prongs about the same size of that fuse, into the place of the fuse. So I've got two prongs soldered to those wires, and they plug in and fit snugly where the 5-amp fuse would go. Take a little look behind here. It's it's tucked. Eh, I don't want to dig it out all over again, but it's tucked back in there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there it is. See the little fuse? I've got a little inline fuse there, so don't worry. The fuse isn't completely missing. It's still there. I just tucked it back away. So the fuse has been relocated, and then the wiring runs up to a little switch here. If you look behind here, you can see where I've mounted the little switch. I just drilled a little hole right through this piece of plastic and mounted this little switch here. Now what this switch does, this switch cuts the power to that column module. So if you ever have the problem, you can simulate a battery disconnect, which resets the module, by flipping the switch off just like so. You flip the switch off, that cuts the power to that module. As you can see, can't start the car. There's no power to it. You could even use this as a little anti-theft uh, mechanism and put your switch wherever you want it. Anyway, that cuts the power to the module, simulates a battery disconnect. After about 15 to 30 seconds, flip the switch back on, give it about another 10-15 seconds to power up, place the key into the ignition once for a few seconds, Remove the key, put the key back in, and start the car. And I've verified twice that this will fix the problem. I've got the message to show up there twice, and I verified that by flipping that switch off and turning it back on, 
this does fix the problem. Again, this is not a permanent fix. Uh, this is just temporary for now. Uh, but the correct, the technically correct way to fix this problem, although it costs a ton of money, is to replace that module in the steering column there. However, I found that this has taken care of the problem. And uh, again, not trying to steal an idea from someone else, but I thought I would share it again and help get the word out there that this is one thing you can do if you have a Saab vehicle that has the same problem. It's much cheaper and much easier than digging into the column and replacing that module and having to get all the proper equipment. And so far, this seems to have corrected the problem. Hope you guys enjoyed this little tip. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next video.